All right, guys. Um, hopefully this isn't too loud. I don't actually need to shout now. But um, yeah, this is a something a little bit different. And uh, this was sparked from... Um, and if, if the microphone's too loud, if it gets distorted or anything like that, please feel free to let me know in the comments, which I should be looking at right now. Let's uh, do, 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 do because I'm using my uh, brother's uh, gaming headset. Oh, there we go. Just heard the, uh, and I've got Craig on hand, uh, who says it's fine. So uh, hi, Craig, and I've uh, got your message as well to tell me that, because I did a little bit of a test video. And uh, hopefully, now that my MacBook is making that horrible noise that it does from the fan, uh, it doesn't come out too much when I'm talking. So, um, yeah, we'll see how this is. So, uh, yeah, this is just something a little bit different. Um, it's my first, well, I arrived back in the UK last night, and I'm going to be here for the foreseeable future. Um, and I thought, to uh, brighten my spirits a little bit, I thought I would uh, do a massive sort out of all my, like, CDs and DVDs and books and that sort of thing and just get myself together, that sort of thing. And, um, yeah, I was watching Rod's chat, Rod JB Adventures. I can't remember which, which one it was, what the title was. Um, but he had Joe and Chad Albino Beer, Albino Rhino Beer Reviews on. And uh, a couple of others, I think um, Todd was on, and Drunken one, as well as Eric the Lions fan. Um, I'm not sure if anybody else was online for that stream. But I was just watching that, and um, Chad was talking about his DVD collection and uh, just listing off all of these weird and wonderful B, C, and Z movies and that sort of thing. And um, I don't know, it, it got me thinking, hang on, I could talk about the films I own, because some of you may know I've got the uh, other YouTube channel called Mondo Squalido, which is a film review channel, although I don't really review on there, but I am going to be uploading more reviews on there because you know craft beer and beer in general is a passion of mine but so is music and so is film and i want to get back into talking about movies on that channel so uh if i've remembered to i'll have put the link down below if not but then i will put it down below but just type in mondo squalido um it was a fairly popular channel at one point i won't lie but um like i said that was just that one one video was my irreversible review which just completely blew up it was like at 13 million views but i think it was getting viewed by some very suspect uh people from of the Ar arabian uh part uh, states arabic not arabian arabic uh, areas so god knows where that review was being shared on i really don't want to know but um yeah I got a little bit of money for that video until YouTube decided to put an age restriction on it and you can't make money on age restricted videos. And then of course it started to go downhill advertisers pulling out that sort of thing. But my channel was pretty much dying uh, before that just getting, yeah, I was used to get like thousands of views per video and now it was struggling to get, you know, a couple of hundred, that sort of thing. But um, yeah, so film is passion sidetracked already and uh, they were talking about these films uh, much to the disgust of joe of course um who seems to have something against like sharknado number 27 um but now it, it was it was funny listening to some of these titles and um i've been sorting out a dvd collection sorting out ones that i'm going to sell and then ones that i'm just going to like box together for like music magpie or whatever where you get like 10p a dvd and just get a little bit of pocket change for that and uh, i thought i would share with you the dvds that i'm deciding to keep and it could be a little bit of a longer video i won't take too long but this one is things where i don't think it's really beneficial to watch this live it's more for when after it's uploaded and you've got like housework to do or whatever um, than to have this video playing in the background. But um, I appreciate anyone who's watching this live, especially my uh, good friend Craig from Kent Beer Reviews. It was a great trap. Throw a beer review on it and any subs across. Yeah, that's me. I want to try and 
sort of bridge the gap between both channels. So include some film related content on the Clueless Drinker channel, but then include like beer related content on the Mondo Squadro channel. And it's like a series that I want to do, which would be like live reviews where I'd like review two beer, uh, two films, uh, probably films that I I've watched and I hate. And then I'll have a couple of beers while I'll talk about it. Then I'll upload one episode on the film channel, one on the Clue Drinker channel. So, you know, it gets audiences crossing over, that sort of thing. But, um, yeah, so speaking of beer, I did a little bit of a beer run to Asda today. And uh, actually, I've got something to show. Uh, picked up a Metal Gear Solid HD collection for the Xbox 360 for a tenner. Both discs. Um, but as you can see, there's just an Xbox One there, and that disc isn't backwards compatible. So I think we've got an Xbox 360 lying around that I can play that. I was just in the mood to pick one up. Uh, I was looking for the Silent Hill HD collection as well, even though I know there's like it's buggy and they, they change the character actors and the voicing and stuff. But uh, while I was out, I uh, picked up some beers uh, primarily for tonight because we'll be doing a chat on uh, Harry's channel, Blue No Beer Reviews. Blue Nose Beer Reviews after he's done his live review with Dean from Dean's Beer Reviews. And uh, I wanted to pick up a few beers. And I'm so happy that my local Asda has the four packs of Elvis King. Elvis King? What? Elvis juice. So I uh, picked up a four pack of that and then just four more beers, a couple of review ones, then just the rest to sit back while I uh, join the chat. So uh, without any further ado, let's pop open the beer using uh, my Brewdog branded teku which is it, it clearly it's a clearly dusty glass because i've not used it since i've been in germany but who cares i've got like a whole shelf now of glassware because i brought it all back with me from germany who knew you could pick up seven years worth of you well five years worth of your life in 60 kilos worth of luggage i somehow achieved it but uh, everything came back safe and sound. I was stressing out like a motherfucker. I really, really was. But yeah, three suitcases. Everything's here. The room's a mess. And uh, that's why I'm doing some sorting out. So uh, yeah, I absolutely adore this beer. I know there are people who would say, oh, but this grapefruit infused IPA is so much better. Yeah, for £1.50 a can, I'm really not going to complain. I've done a review of this one, so I won't go on about it, but... That's absolutely gorgeous. That's an absolutely gorgeous beer. I also, when I'm feeling a bit peckish, I've got a, a pork and black pudding pie because that's one thing I missed while I was in, in Germany was um, all the the weird and wonderful, well, not weird and wonderful, but just the wonderful pastries like uh, sausage rolls because they don't have sausage rolls in Germany. And like meat and potato pies, steak pudding, yeah, just all of those. And so I can indulge in that now. So anyway, uh, God knows how long we've been recording so far. Not even mention the, any DVDs. So let's do that. So kicking off, we've got uh, the uh, Hell of the Living Dead by Bruno Matai. My favorite zombie movie, even though it rips off other movies and di directly lifts music from other films. But um, yeah, it's just cheesy, trashy fun. And uh, I love the use of stock footage in it, of like wildlife and uh, fake tribe footage. It's just absolutely fantastic. Trashy as hell, but such a fun ride. Uh, there we've got a, a bootleg that I bought uh, from, what's the website called? Uh, Z, Z, ZDF or something like that. Let me cover up boobs. But as you can see, it's probably just taken from a VHS, but it doesn't have a a DVD release, and that's Vultures Over the City, which is a an Italian crime film uh, from 1980, starring the legendary Maurizio Merli, who's got one of the best moustaches in Italian cinema history. And, uh, yeah, there it is. It's just, uh, it's just burnt onto disc. ZDD Visual Media, I picked that up from. But I do love my Italian crime films, and... Uh, the main, most of these films are going to be Italian films from the 70s because that's my jam. That's what I want to concentrate now on when I'm buying DVDs. 
So I've got another Italian classic, and this is uh, 2019, After the Fall of New York, which is a post-apocalyptic film directed by, uh, who is that by? Martin Dolovan, but I'm sure that's uh, a pseudonym for someone else. Can't remember who actually directed this film. But um, yeah, just look at that. Look at that gun. That massive fuck-off laser gun. Yeah, I do love my uh, post-apocalyptic cheesy action. And uh, yeah. So that's a, a damn fun, damn fun film. And if anybody's got any questions or uh, suggestions on films or anything like that, or even if you want to just ask me anything, just hit me up in the comments. It's it's a free for all today. Uh, Stick with the Italian theme. We've got another classic, and this one is uh, Lucio Fulci's The New York Ripper. This is the um, the Another World Entertainment disc, which is uh, a Danish label. Uh, but there are multiple versions of this film. Um, some are different cuts of the film. A lot of them are uncut, but some of them have footage that are not in other releases. So I'm sure there's like a, a fan edit of this film. But yeah, this is a, a very nasty and brutal film, uh, which involves uh, someone smashing a glass bottle, sticking it into a woman's vagina, and then literally ripping her in half. Of course, you don't rarely see it, but um, it, I wouldn't put it past Lucio Fulci to actually have made a, a practical effect like that. But um, yeah, and the killer has a Donald Duck voice. So um, good trashy times. Not for the weak of heart. Uh, next up, we've got some uh, pretty much porn from the UK. Uh, from the director of 24 Hour Party People, aka the best film of all time. And that is uh, Nine Songs, which is about a couple who meet at a gig. And then the film basically follows them from the start of the relationship up until the end of the relationship. There's lots of unsimulated and very explicit sex scenes. And then it's intercut with live performances from uh, bands like Elbow, Black Rebel Motorcycle Club. Um, so and it got a great soundtrack, and uh, it's actually, I'm not really selling this film, am I? Uh, it's done really, really well. And, um, yeah, if you want some porn that you can pick up from your local HMV, give nine songs a go. Happy days. So we've got, next film is from one of my favourite directors, and he's probably my favourite director who's working right now. Uh, from the UK, and that is uh, Ben Wheatley, and this is A Field in England, which was, um, it was released in cinema, on TV, and like on demand, and DVD and Blu-ray, all at the same time. It was like sort of an experiment in terms of distribution, and it's basically about a group of people in like the English Civil War, who are going through a field, <laughs> it's a field in England, and uh, they come across like treasure and mushrooms and that sort of thing. It's very, very trippy. Not for everybody, but beautiful black and white cinematography. And uh, yeah, Ben Wheatley is just one of my favorite directors. Uh, another very questionable film. And uh, this time we have got, oh, the, the boobs are starred out for me, so that's okay. We have got Emmanuel, Queen of Sados. Or one of the other titles that I like for this one is Emmanuel, the Queen Bitch. And it's directed by a Greek director. And although not sexually explicit, there are some very questionable scenes in this film um, involving a clearly underage girl. It is very unsettling. And uh, yeah, this is, this is as trashy as cinema can get without actually showing sex. But um, yeah, it's one of the, the many offshoots of the Emmanuel series. Uh, next up, we have Formula for a Murder, which is another Italian film directed by Alberto Di Martino. And uh, yeah, it stars David Warbeck. Uh, it basically spoils the, the whole premise of the film. Um, from the trailer to the promotional materials, because you're like, who is the killer? Well, it shows you on the fucking DVD, you mook. So, uh, yeah, uh, Formula for a Murder, a.k.a. Seven Hyden Park, uh, 
it's sort of like a late 80s uh, giallo film. Uh, does it say? Yeah, from 1984. And yeah, it's trashy fun and uh, highly recommended. So, quickly check the comments. Uh, da -da 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 -da. Craig says Elvis King, new beer. And uh, yeah, that. I actually wonder what they're going to rename this. Because, um, of course, the Elvis estate has uh, sued them basically. Uh, Pornhub will do. Classic. Mm. That's such a good beer. It's absolutely wonderful. I know Brewdog, they're a little bit... Mm, but uh, that beer's fantastic. Next up, another Italian uh, classic, another trashy one, uh, directed by... Um, I can't read that. It, it, it says Andrew Wright, but I think it's the guy who uh, directed a film that I will be showing called uh, Strip Nude for Your Killer. But uh, this is <laughs> Malabimba the Malicious Whore, the X-rated version from Severin, um, about a, a girl who is of age. The actress is of age, but she portrays like a 15 or 16-year-old girl. God, people are just stumbling on this video and thinking, what the fuck is going on here? And uh, yeah, she gets possessed. And then she uh, acts out a lot of sexual acts on people. And there's violence and, um, yeah, lots of uh, lesbianism as well. But it, it's a good old time. Family-friendly channel. Family-friendly DVDs. Here's a good one. Another classic part of the uh, Nazi exploitation genre. And from the guy who did the um, Hell of the Living Dead. One of my favourite directors, Bruno Mattai. That's why I initially named my film channel Mattai of the Dead. Um, and this is uh, SS Girls, which is, of course, about the uh, the Third Reich. And it's uh, yeah, it's typical Nazis round up young, attractive girls, and they put them through all sorts of trials and tribulations, that sort of thing. And then, like, love triangles and relationships develop, and then people die, and so, but it's trashy at the same time. Just an absolutely wonderful piece of cinema. And, um, yeah, another one that is highly recommended from me. Uh, then we're going back to the good old-fashioned porn with uh, a couple of films from Henry Paris, which is the pseudonym of um, Radley Metzger who was, uh, although he didn't create the porno chic sort of genre and era, he was probably my favorite director to come out of that, which you know, legitimized porn in the 70s. It showed you that not these films aren't just like shot in like someone's spur room. You know, actual production value, scripts, proper acting, proper scores. And uh, yeah, so the first one is the opening of Misty Beethoven which, um, what's the, it's based, it's like an adaptation of a, of like a, a classic story, but instead of um, teaching the girl multiple languages, uh, the character, or the main guy, who is Jamie Gillis, the classic uh, porno actor, uh, he doesn't teach her different languages, he teaches her different sexual techniques, and um, yeah, it's, uh, you can look down on porn, I see why people do it, but when it's done like this, it's done in such a legitimate way. It's got scope, it's 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 a film. It's a film first and foremost that just happens to have porn in. And then another one is The Private Afternoons of Pamela Mann, which follows the woman Pamela Mann. And um, yeah, considered one of the greatest erotic films of all time. So um, it's basically uh, about a man who hires a detective to uh, spy on his wife, who goes from partner to partner, sexual situation to sexual situation. And again, it's done in such a nice, nice way. It's not, yeah, you know, it's porn, as trashy 70s porn is fun. Don't get me wrong. But that is, again, you can watch it as a legitimate piece of, a film, to be honest. Uh, duh, 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 duh. 
Craig says, music in classic porn is hilarious. Yes, it is indeed. And uh, I've actually got a lot of porn music on my in my iTunes uh, because I do geek out like that when I hear a piece of, like library music that I know or I've heard before. And I'm like, oh, shit, I've got that on MP3. So happy days. Uh, next up, we've got a film by uh, another classic director of Smut, and that is from Jess Franco. And this is The Hot Nights of Linda, starring uh, his muse and wife, Lena Ramey. And, um, yeah, as you can tell, there's uh, an infamous scene involving a banana. Let's just leave it at that. But there's also like a, a VHS cut of this film, which I think has a little bit more sexually explicit material. It's cheap Jess Franco fun. Um, not for everyone, but I think it's great. You'll hear me saying that a lot about some of these films. Uh, next up, going back to the good old-fashioned 70s porn, we've got Sean Costello's Forced Entry. Um, some of the titles just sound so gnarly, don't they? And this is basically about a, a Vietnam veteran who comes back. He's got a job at a uh, petrol station or a gas station, as I should probably say. And, uh, yeah, he has flashbacks and then ends up taking out his anger on young suspecting women. And I notice I've lost a viewer. So, um, yeah, it's uh, it's going to be a bit of a weird chat. Don't worry. Uh, Going on to more legitimate films, we've got the La Reine, which is uh, French for hatred, uh, which is a classic film from the 90s and um, starring the absolutely handsome uh, Vincent Cassel. And it's about a group of youths in Paris because there's a lot of like uh, social and political tension. Uh, police are under the microscope, that sort of thing. And, um, yeah, it's just a good piece of, like, 90s, almost neo-realism, but not Italian, French. Great French uh, hip-hop soundtrack as well with this one. Just It's just a classic film. It's one of those ones where if you've studied film, chances are this film has come up on, like, whatever you've been told to watch. Uh, next up, these next two titles seem to have uh, naked buttocks on them. I think you can show bums on um, YouTube. Can you? I don't know. But we've got Lars von Trier's The Idiots, which is, uh, you could not make this film now because you would be called a bigot and you would, you'd, you'd trigger so many people. And it's basically about like a group of like higher class people who embrace their inner idiot and they basically do impressions of like mentally challenged people. They just have a bit of fun. Um, they just bring out their inner idiot and do silly things. And uh, it's a very raw film because it's part of the Dogma 95 manifesto where it's like you just film with like really basic equipment. You don't do too much editing. You don't have like fake lighting. You just shoot straight from the camera, that sort of thing. And uh, yeah, it's it's a it's an odd film, but it's fun at the same time. Then we've got one of my favourite films of all time, Import Export, which is from uh, Ulrich Seidel, and it's basically a film about two people. You've got this uh, woman who um, to, she wants a better life for a family for a child, so she goes to another country. Can't remember what country she goes to. And uh, she starts off as like a a cam girl for a while, and then she gets a job as a like a nurse and a cleaner at an old people's home, and then that story is like intercut with the story of that young boy who again uh, to better his life he goes on a on travels with his uh, like stepdad who sells buys and sells trash and like old pinball machines and that sort of thing. It's one of those films where. Not much happens in it, but it's so engrossing and realistic. And there's funny parts, there's really like awkward parts and hard to watch parts in it. It's just, you know, when people talk about European cinema, this is the sort of film that they're talking about. Just fantastic, though. 
So I'll quickly have a look. No, no more new comments. I'm very, very slowly getting through these DVDs. I do apologize. Let's have a bit of pie. <laughs> you cannot go wrong with a pork pie, especially when it has black pudding in it. Anyway, next up we've got another Jello film from Sergio Martino, and this is The Strange Vice of Mrs. Vaud. And uh, this stars the absolutely gorgeous, gorgeous um, Edwidge Fenech, or Fenich, I'm not sure how it's properly pronounced, and of course um, George Hilton. And uh, I can't remember the actual story of this film, but a lot of people get killed. There's uh, an anonymous killer. And then it gets revealed at the end. It's just, you know, a classic thriller. But, um, yeah, I'll have to revisit that one, actually, so I can uh, talk about it. Uh, next, so we've got another sort of giallo, but sort of a sci-fi, and it's very weird. It's L'Homme, which is uh, the alternate title, or the French title, I think, for Footprints on the Moon, which is about a woman who wakes up in, like, she gets images of space and Klaus Kinski has like a very small role in it. Yeah, it, it's a bit of a mind fuck. It's a bit trippy and I cannot remember for the life of me the actual story of it. So um, I'm going to have fun revisiting some of these films. So we've got another classic giallo, this time from one of the masters of the genre, Dario Argento. And this is Four Flies on Grey Velvet, which is... Um, about a maniac who follows a a musician. Lots of people get killed. Lots of people are put onto suspicion. Lots of red herrings. Classic Jello um, film. Great violence in there because Dario Argento was you know a master of portraying violence on screen. It's a shame his career's just gone boo now because he's just produced so much shit in the last ten twenty years. Uh, but yeah, great score as well, which I think is from Goblin on this one. Let me just see. Because the scores to these um, Italian films in general are just absolutely beautiful. There's some genuinely beautiful music. No, it's from Ennio Morricone. I'd forgotten that Ennio Morricone scored that film. Uh, next up, we've got the film I was talking about, Andrea Bianchi. Uh, that's the guy who uh, directed Malabimba, the malicious whore, just in case you wanted to look it up. And this is a strip nude for your killer, which is about a, a group of female models who are getting picked off one by one. And you know you you know you want for a classic of a film when it opens up with an abortion. Yes, indeed. Uh, yeah, a lot of these films push the boundaries of taste, and I love them for it. If you know my humour, if you know what I'm into, uh, in that regard, then you know I love like things that are just so politically incorrect, and a lot of these films are. Uh, then we've got my favourite giallo, which is um, Antonio Vido's The Cat's Victims. There's just something so beautiful about this film. Um, I mean, it's not like the best... Uh, classic example of the genre, but for me, it's just a, an absolutely wonderful film and has possibly, possibly, possibly the greatest Italian film score of all time from Trans Europa Express, who that's like a, a pseudonym for two composers whose names I've completely forgotten. But um, yeah, fantastic film. And it's one that a lot of people say, oh, it's just ripping off Dario Argento. Nah. I don't agree with that. It's a great film. Then we've got, with one of the worst DVD covers ever, Enzo G. Castellari's Cold Eyes of Fear. Of course, Enzo G. Castellari, known for his action films, like uh, the Bronx Warriors films, like 1990 The Bronx Warriors, Escape from the Bronx, um, some Italian crime films, which I'll be showing in a little bit, and uh, as well as uh, The New Barbarians, which is the best Italian post-apocalyptic film ever. 
I can't believe I sold my uh, Bronx Warriors trilogy tin that I had, which included that film. Um, but yeah, this is his foray into. It's not. It's not Jallo. Uh, it's more like like a thriller in general. To be honest, uh, it, it's a bit removed from what he usually does, but it still has those like classic Enzo G. Castellari. Uh, flavors to it if that makes sense uh here we go craig writes pork pie with black pudding why we don't get them down in the south east that i know of yeah i think that is a very northern sort of thing to be honest just put just put anything in a pie it's all good mix and match that that, that, that they should do that they should have a mix and match pie section in a supermarket that'd be fantastic But yeah, pies in general, you just can't go wrong with them. Uh, next up, we've got a double feature of two Italian crime films, mainly to do with the Mafia. And that is I Am The Law and a film that's just called Mafia. Uh, these aren't like trashy or action-packed. They're a bit more straight-faced and serious. Um, I've not watched I Am The Law yet, but Mafia is a good one. And I, I love the fact that that's, that's a Mafia symbol. Like, the devil, like to say you're next or something like that i'm sure people will correct me on that one uh next up is one of my favorite films of all time and i've got two versions of this film so this is pierre paolo pasolini's salo or the 120 days of sodom adapted from um the marquis de sard's 120 days of sodom you would not be able to um adapt that without getting yourself arrested basically it's a great piece of fiction a uh, great piece of literature highly recommended you should read it and this film is just it's just phenomenal of course marquis de sade was 18th century so the sort of like aristocrats is that that's right or libertines have been replaced with like um italian well italian libertines and it's set in like world war Two. And there's a lot of like political, social commentary and that sort of thing. Talks about mass production and food and all sorts. And uh, there are absolutely some horrific scenes in this film. But um, it's just an absolute classic. Um, you can watch it to be shocked or you can watch it for its intellectual properties. And this is the BFI version, which is the DVD and Blu-ray and uh, this version is different to your version i have because there's a segment in this where uh one of the women i think is talking about nazi soldiers which was removed from some versions of the film but um yeah it's bleak it's very i you get a real sense of isolation with this one but it's somewhat beautiful at the same time one of my all-time favorite films and even though it's like over two hours long you can watch it time and time again so next up we've got a, a trio of uh, thrillers and jellos from blue underground and we've got the bloodstained shadow short nights of glass short night of glass dolls and who saw her die so uh three really intriguing films uh bloodstained shadow is about uh, deals with catholicism and um a lot of these films do de deal with uh, religion uh, when you think about it. Um, so there's a killer going around in all of these. Uh, Short, Night, Short Night of Glass Dolls is about a man who... Um, it's like he gets... See, I've not watched these for such a long time. He basically gets into a coma, but he's fully conscious of what's going on around him, and people are dying, and then like a cult comes into play. And then Who Saw Her Die stars uh, James Bond himself, George Lazenby, whose uh, daughter dies. And um, yeah, he's trying to find out who the killer is and why the killer killed his daughter. So um, yeah, interesting uh, tr trio of films there. Uh, then we've got one that I've not actually got around to watching yet, but this is My Dear Killer, which is directed by... Does it actually say Tonino Valeri, 
with uh, a score by Ennio Morricone again. And it also Ennio Morricone did the score for Salo. And uh, yeah, I'm not too sure about this one. But again, people die. There's a killer on the loose. And someone plays the role as detective to seek him out. So uh, next up, we have got uh, Caffeiniac, which is a collection of short independent films, uh, which is from one of my friend's labels, Nick, Spot, Nick Box, over at Dead Good Films Like. A really interesting uh, independent director, actually, and um, he's having a documentary made about him, which I need to sign release for him so they can use uh, footage of my reviews of his films. But yeah, I, I do like these anthology sort of films. I like seeing different directors coming together. And I like the fact that some films are just completely different from what you've seen previously. But um, yeah, that's worth a revisit for me. Then we've got um, Possession by Andrei Zulavsky. Uh This is a fan version made by a friend of mine from YouTube. Who, you know, it's, it's, just, a, it's just a bootleg. But it includes a Greek DVD of the film, uh, a fridge magnet, a printout of the actress from the film, and there's Sam Neill in the background from uh, Jurassic Park, of course, and then a cool, glossy photo still of the film. Uh, for me personally, I think the film is a pretentious piece of shit with terrible acting, but people seem to praise it for that. Uh, but it, it is, it's a weird one. Um, it is worth watching once, but I don't see why people get so hyped about it, to be honest. Uh, I'm going to have to go through these a little bit quicker because I don't want to be here for like fucking four hours or so. But like I said, this is more for people watching once it's been uploaded. So I've got another crime film, and this is uh, Shadows in an Empty Room, which stars uh, John Saxon and Martin Landau. And basically, I think a, a detective, his, uh, his sister, who's a student, gets killed, and he basically does what he can to, to solve the case. Of course, goes above the law. And uh, yeah, it's just a, a really good piece of 70s action. Uh, some more Italian action now with um, Live Like a Cop, Die Like a Man. Um, can't remember too much about it, to be honest. Directed by Ruggiero Diodoto, who directed Cannibal Holocaust, which is sacrilege, I know, but I don't have a copy of Cannibal Holocaust, and it's one of my favourite films of all time. Uh, but yeah, it's, it, this is an Italian disc, so I can't read you a synopsis of it, and I can't really remember too much specifically about what happens. Uh, then we've got a film from one of my favourite directors, uh, Michael Haneke, and this is uh, Amour, which is about a couple, an old couple, and um, the wife um, gets an illness, so she starts to deteriorate, and it just follows the, the couple, really. So it's, yeah, it's quite a sad film, but it's got quite a shocking end to it. Uh, speaking of shocking ends, we've got The Great Silence, which is um, a spaghetti western film, as you can see, directed by Sergio Corbucci, starring Klaus Kinski, and uh, funny enough, the guy from Amour, uh, Jean-Louis Trintiant, well, I'm not sure how you pronounce that, got one of the bleakest endings to a western of all time, uh, which I won't spoil, but if you've seen it, you'll know what I'm talking about. Got an absolutely beautiful score from Ennio Morricone, one of his finest. And uh, yeah, the, the ending was so bleak to this film that the producers at the time demanded that Corbucci direct a much more uplifting version of it. And um, yeah, it's just, it's just a great film. And uh, you will have seen this referenced in uh, Django Unchained from Quentin Tarantino who likes to rip off a lot of films. And people say that he's an original director because he has like 45-minute pieces of dialogue in his films. Uh, yeah, whatever. Uh, next up, we've got a film by David Cronenberg, and this is The Brood, which stars um, one of my favourite drinkers of all time, um, Oliver... 
Oliver, how did I forget Oliver Reed's name? Uh, and it's basically, it's a mind fuck of a film. Uh, basically, a couple get a divorce, and uh, the, the wife's a little bit loopy. And uh, she can influence children. Children go on the loose and kill, that sort of thing. And uh, yeah, some really nice shocking twists and turns. Lots of uh, lovely body horror, as you would expect from David Cronenberg. Need to revisit that one because I've forgotten about it. Uh, then we've got Radio Soul Wax, part of The Weekend Never Dies, which is a documentary about Soul Wax. Uh, I do like Soul Wax. Got a big, got a lot of time for them and uh, too many DJs, the DJ outfit. <laughs> but if you're not into soul wax then you're not going to get it so why should i talk about it uh so that's that's one pile sorted out let's uh see what comments we have and i'm running out of beer but i don't really think i should get another can when i'm going to be doing a hangout tonight maybe i will i don't know have another bite of this uh lovely pork pie I didn't want to, didn't want you to hear me being a slob then, so I pulled the microphone away. Uh, so yeah, I've got two even bigger piles now, so I've got to keep it as minimum as possible in terms of a description, just so I'm not wasting your guys' time. And uh, yeah, so first up, we've got a double pack of uh, some nice Hammer films. And we've got The Vampire Lovers and Lust for a Vampire. So, um, yeah, classic, gothic sort of films. You've got lovely women in uh, flimsy nightgowns. What more do you want, to be honest? Then we've got a classic, which I'm not ashamed to say I love, and that is Flashdance. We all know Flashdance. Great soundtrack. Uh, then we've got another fan film, or fan edit of a film, or release of a film that was given to me, which is one of four releases. And uh, you get the film, which has been sourced from different versions. I think there is a legitimate release now from France of this one, and that is uh, Giallo Avenizia. It's a very mean-spirited and graphic Giallo film. But inside, you get some notes. You get... Uh, I'm not going to show you the photo because it's a, a very nice photo, especially uh, the downstairs region. And uh, yeah, then you've got like a couple of art cards in there. You know, this guy didn't sell any, and he does these for a lot of films. Uh, he just does it for the passion of it, for fans of these films. And uh, you also get a bootleg soundtrack of the film. So um, yeah, it's it's a nasty film, very trashy. And very, very good. Then we've got uh, The Clash, West Way to the World. The Clash, the greatest band of all time. And uh, yeah, this is basically a documentary about The Clash, to be honest. Uh, more of the like American period. Let's leave it at that. Uh, another classic film, Saturday Night Fever. Fantastic soundtrack. Uh, then we've got an independent film, Turn Heel, which is made by a couple of friends of mine, which is about a, a wrestler who haunts the countryside and kills people. What more do you want? It's a short film, so I can't really say too much more than that. Then we've got the Ring Trilogy. These are great pieces of Japanese horror. I do like the American remakes as well. I still need some of the see the some of the newer ones that have been released, but um, yeah, The Ring, good scary times. Japanese know how to do good horror. Japanese know also know how to do good porn. Uh, then we got a film by Rainer Werner Fassbinder, and this is um, Fear Eats the Soul. 
which is about an older woman who falls in love with um, an immigrant, which, you know, there's a lot of racial tension right now. So a film dealing with that from, when was this made? Uh, 1974. You know, that's going to be a dangerous film. Still need to watch that, to be honest. But um, I'm sure it will be socially conscious. Then we've got another great British film, uh, Barbarian Sound Studio, directed by Peter Strickland. If you're a fan of Jello films, you'll enjoy this one because it's about, um, what's his name, Toby... Uh, Toby Jones plays as a... like a folly artist and, uh, you know, does the audio for films and, like, overlooks the dubbing of a film and that sort of thing. And uh, the film that he's, like, recording the sound effects for and putting the the actual soundtrack together for, um, it starts to really play with his mind. And this is one of those films where you watch this at, like, 2 o'clock in the morning, turn the lights off. You're going to get buzzed just from the film alone. Fantastic stuff. Not for everyone, though. Uh... Craig says, I think I've seen Amor, and he asks if I've got piles. Uh, yeah, I've got two massive piles. Absolutely stonking piles. Uh, next up, we've got another film by Pierre Paolo Pasolini, and this is Pigsty. Haven't watched it yet, so I'm not going to talk about it. Uh, I'm supposed to be selling you guys, but no, I seem to have put you all in this pile so I won't show them because what's the point uh, next up we've got Frozen Land which is a Finnish film I uh, can't remember too much that happens in it it's one of those ones where there's a lot of characters who all come together through one situation it's like dark comedy it's brutal it's like quite depressing at times as well and uh, darkly hilarious, it's being described as. So there's that one. Can't really tell you too much about that because I can't remember too much. I've uh, got a couple more Giallo films. This time we've got Umberto Lenzi's uh, Labyrinth, which pff, it's been so long since I've watched it. No idea. Got a gorgeous score from Bruno Nicolai, though. And then we've got another Lucio Fulci film, Lizard in a Woman's Skin with a soundtrack from uh, Ennio Morricone this time, if I remember correctly. Um, try to read the, yeah. Uh, it's basically about a woman who has like a dream that someone dies and then that person actually dies, if I remember it. It's got a really gruesome effect with like skinned dogs, which I think actually got Lucio Fulci in trouble because people thought it was a real effect. So uh, next up, Cinema Paradiso which if you love cinema, get this film. It's about the passion of cinema. It's about the love of cinema. It follows a young boy who, in his hometown of Sicily, I'd absolutely adore to go to Sicily. Looks like a beautiful place. And uh, he's obsessed with cinema. So he goes to his local cinema house, ends up getting a job as a, in the projection booth. Then the cinema, like, gets burnt down the buddy like does what he can to restore it he has a beautiful relationship with this old man which when i watched it the first time it actually made me cry because it reminded me of my relationship with my late granddad so you know it really tugs at the heartstrings a lot with this one and then um the, the whole story focuses about the boy as an older man who i think like revisits sicily and um yeah he's just remembering all the stuff that happened throughout his life and um at the forefront cinema is there so it's a film lovers film at the end of the day fantastic stuff and again a beautiful soundtrack from Ennio morricone and i need to uh wet my whistle a bit because i'm getting a dry throat let's have another bit of pie
just realised that showing that on screen, that looked really raw. But I think that's from the, the black pudding. It is cooked. Because look at the pastry. I'm not I'm not Paul. I don't just eat raw meat. Uh, next up, we've got a Western from Sergio Salima. Faccia Faccia, face to face. Um, about like a, an academic guy, a teacher, who gets ambushed by like a, a ruthless like bandit sort of guy. And then it's sort of like, who's the real monster here sort of thing like who's the um who's the more civilized of the two a really interesting like turning society on its head through the stuff that happens in it and uh yeah beautiful artwork on this dvd interesting stuff can't remember too much about it though uh, then we've got a selection of documentaries by mark isaacs which include the lifts travelers and Calais, The Last Border. The Lift is my favourite one, and I think it's uploaded on YouTube, so I highly recommend that you guys watch it. Where basically, the director is in like a, a, a block of flats, and for a few days he just literally sat in the lift and filmed his interactions with residents of the flats. And you actually get to find out a hell of a lot about some of these people. It's a bit funny because there's like drunken people and then all that sort of stuff. But there are some people who just open up so much to the, the camera and you like you really feel for them. And the other two documentaries are interesting as well. I do love a good documentary. Then we've got William Shatner in Mystery of the Gods, Mysteries of the Gods, which is um, it's about ancient aliens. It's a documentary from the 70s with... William Shatner talking about aliens like this. Very trippy. You know, very much a sign of its time. And uh, it's beautiful for that. Next up, we've got Festen, another part of the Dogma series of films. And uh, this is about a family that come together to celebrate the like wedding anniversary of the mum and dad. But it all goes tits up when uh, one of the children, or who is now fully grown, uh, starts to, in the middle of a speech, shout about how he was abused by his father. So it's uh, yeah, it's like it's quite hard to watch at times because of like you're like oh god that's cringy, but it's like darkly funny at the same time. Uh, a really interesting film if you want some good old fashioned dark humour, and there is more to it than that. You like see the different children with their families and they've all got their own issues and problems so next up we've got Dario Argento's uh, The Bird with the Crystal Plumage which is probably his most loved Jello film aside from Deep Red which I've got in the collection and uh, this is part of the uh, the Animal Trilogy that he did which I only own two of the films from that trilogy the third one was The Fog Flies on Grey Velvet and the other one was called The the Cat's Nine Tales or something like that. I wrote about Italian giallo films for my uh, thesis uh, when I was studying films. So I should be a little bit more well-versed to talk about these. But when you sit in front of a camera and you've not like really researched or anything, it, it's quite hard to um, you know, really put the facts out there. So I hope I'm at least interested in some of you guys about these films. But yeah, this is probably... Aside from the Mario Bava films that came before it, this probably revitalized the genre and put down the blueprint that a lot of directors would follow. And uh, yeah, great soundtrack once again. I uh, can't remember who did this one. Was it um, Ennio Marconi again? But yeah, fantastic film. Uh, this, if there was ever to be a questionable dvd label award i think this one would win it yeah it looks like something you get from uh, a suspect guy at a pub uh but it's not it's a it's a coming of age drama from the 80s or late 70s early 80s it's not explicit it's not anything like that it's actually like more of a young adult sort of film but this is kleiner biesta because this is the only way you can get it on legitimate DVD is through Germany. 
And this is Little Darlings. Even the name just sounds icky. Do you know what I mean? Uh, but yeah, it's about two young girls who go to summer camp and they learn a lot about themselves and sexuality, that sort of thing. And it's also got, I think, uh, Matthew, Matt Damon's, no, not Matt Damon, what's his name? Uh, da, 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 da. I always forget his name. I can't even think of a film. He was in You, Me and Dupree. The black are uh, really piercing eyes. I don't know. Uh, but yeah, it's a good, it's a good film. Uh, next up, we've got Belle de Jour from Louis Brunel, starring the absolutely beautiful Catherine Deneuve. And uh, yeah, this is one of those films where she is so sensual in this film that you, you actually rarely get to see nudity from her. But she's just so beautiful. And uh, yeah, this is... I don't know how you'd, uh, how you'd describe this film. She's basically a wife of, like, she's sexually unfulfilled and she goes on a little bit of a, an adventure. I've watched it once. I was blown away by it, but I can't remember too much about it. So uh, I apologize about that. And I think I might actually go get another beer in a minute. So uh, we might have an intermission. Because it's Friday. I've got nothing to do. Let's have another bit of pork pie. You probably can see all like crumbs around my mouth now. Fucking slob. Uh, but yeah, got a couple more comments from Craig. I love 80s classics, Brat Pack films, and others like The Lost Boys, Teen Wolf, Breakfast Club with Science, etc., etc. Yeah, I love those films. Um, funny enough, I actually really don't own any of them on DVD for whatever reason, but a lot of them you can, they'll end up on Sky or something, but. Breakfast Club especially is just one that you can just watch time and time again. That's that's a great film. Plus, the soundtrack to that, oh, come on. Wonderful stuff. Uh, so next up, got another one from Bruno Matai. And this is a Mondo documentary that he directed. And this is called Libido Mania. Don't think I need to explain what happens in this one. Uh, but again, it's very politically incorrect. Uh, it's a tad racist at points, uh, but then again, it was the early 70s. So, at, well, have attitudes evolved that much to this point? Mm, you could argue no. Um, but yeah, it's just trashy. It's silly. It's supposed to be about, uh, it's like framed around like a, a professor, even though he's clearly an actor, talking about like different fetishes and different sexual preferences there is really no scientific basis at all for this film it's just pure trash purely to titillate purely to shock and it's so damn good it's so fun it's such a fun film uh, then we've got a box set from Fernando de Leo, his Crime Collection Volume 1, which includes Caliber 9, The Italian Connection, The Boss, and Rulers of the City. This is a must-own. It really, really is. If you want to get into really good Italian crime cinema of the 70s, pick up this from uh, Raro Video. Fantastic stuff. It really, really is. Um, yeah, it's, it's just good action. It's good crime action. And uh, we don't seem to be getting that in our action films nowadays. Uh, then we've got The Bicycle Thieves from Vittorio De Sica, which is about uh, a guy. It's like post-war uh, Italy. So the country's being ravaged, uh, you know, inflation, poverty, that sort of thing. And uh, a man wants to better his life, so he gets a job as someone who puts posters on walls and he gets a bicycle so he can go around the city to do it but it gets stolen from him and the film follows him and his son trying to find you know the person who stole his bike or to see if they find his bike lying around 
And uh, yeah, it's it's like neo realism. It's like the Italian neo realism film uh, to watch. And again, it's one of those ones. It's very acquired um, because not much goes on, but it's very raw. It's very real, and it's actually quite relatable in some respects. So uh, highly recommended if you want someone that's actually going to make you think and appreciate the life that you have. Uh, then we've got. Vim Bender's The American Friend, which stars Bruno Ganz and uh, the legend that is Dennis Hopper. Uh, I think it's, uh, it's like a, sort of like a noir sort of film, but also pays like a little bit of homage to B movies as well. But yeah, I can't remember too much. I mean, it's got a commentary which I need to listen to with Vim Vendors and Dennis Hopper. So um, I might do that after I've finished this video. Uh, then we've got a film, and now this is going to make a lot of people uncomfortable with the subject matter of this film. But this is by um, Marcus Schleitzner, and this is a film called Michael. And it's basically about a paedophile who abducts a child, and it shows you their relationship. You don't see anything, you know, no sexual acts are implied or anything like that. It's like the, the relationship that they have, um, like the sort of as as much of a daily life as you could have as a child who's been abducted by a predator sort of thing. And again, it's got that sort of like weird, like dark humor to it. But it is, it's not like, God, you, you sort of dig yourself into a hole when you talk about films like this. It's not glorifying the act of abduction or pedophilia. In fact, it does you know it's very against that it portrays the man as a monster but at the same time he's human as well and they do have a relationship it's a very odd film um not for everyone i know a lot of people will struggle with a film like this especially if you have children yourself but um yeah intelligent and thoughtful full of humor surrealism mystery and emotional bustle there's some of the reviews for you on the back. And it's got probably one of the best lines in a film that I've heard for quite a while. So they sat down, ready to eat. And uh, the, the guy stands up, holds a knife in his hand and says, this is, uh, I don't know if I should even be, saying this line live because it's really fucking dodgy when you think about it you don't even need to think about it for it to be dodgy the whole situation's dodgy and he goes like sort of along the lines of this is my knife and this is my penis you don't say it don't worry which one do you want me to stab you with and then the kid just like very coldly not even like an emotional way just goes the knife and it, there's just little bits of bobs like that which will not sit right with a lot of people, understandably. But uh, yeah, it's as dark as humour can get without glorifying the, the subject matter. So it's, it's, it's still humorous, but it's also very straight-faced and you know, very emotional at the same time. But, you know, different countries in Europe have different sensibilities when it comes to humour and tackling of social problems i suppose all right i'm gonna read this one then i'm gonna go downstairs get another drink so there will be a little bit of a pause deader if you will so hopefully that won't annoy too many people when uh, they come to see that i'm actually not on camera or then when people are watching this after it's been uploaded nothing happens but i won't be long uh, we've got Shogun's Samurai, which is like a, it's a Japanese epic, which uh, I've only watched half of. It's one of those films where I thought it was so engrossing and engaging, but never actually finished it. So it's another film that I need to finish properly so I can fully appreciate it and talk to it. But it's so big. It's got such great scope, great performances. It's, you know, it's an epic in all manners of the word but um yeah fantastic stuff from what i've seen so far anyway 
So I'm going to go get another drink, and I shall hopefully be not too long. All right, guys, so uh, yeah, that didn't take long. I could have easily just stopped the broadcast there and done a part two, but yeah, I don't do that. Uh, as I said many times, I am a true professional on the Clue String channel. So uh, the next beer I'm having is a classic, and this is Sierra Nevada's Pale Ale. Love this beer, one of my all-time favorite beers, and I'm so happy I can get it for around two pounds a bottle again. Just going to use the same glass, because who cares? Okay, I'm sure I had more beer in my fringe to 30 mil can than I did in this fringe to 55 milliliter bottle. Does this even have a best before day on it? Because I just, I just got it from the shelf, picked it up. Um, yeah, 19th of the 6th, 2018, so no idea what sort of um, like time frame Sierra Nevada puts on their beers, but it's it's far from stale, I suppose, but yeah, just look at that. Beautiful, beautiful beer. On with the films. Got a classic black exploitation film here, Superfly, um, with a great soundtrack from Curtis Mayfield. I'm your mama, I'm your daddy, I'm your mm -hmm in the alley. Yeah, just just great, absolutely great. And um, yeah, perceptive, fast paced, and a very important movie. That's how it's been described. Just a classic piece of cinema. I just love it. Absolutely awesome. Then we've got a, a few cheap martial arts films from budget labels. So we've got The Ninja Squad, Golden Ninja Warrior, Ninja Terminator, Ninja Dragon. Yeah, these are just terrible films um, in the classic sense, but so enjoyable. Uh, a lot of the time, they're actually just splicings of films that already exist with maybe like 10 minutes worth of footage actually shot for the film. Very, very cheap filming techniques. And this one's Ninja the Protector. So you've got camouflage ninjas. You've got ninjas who've literally got ninja written on the headbands. It's just a good time. These are films that you get the beers in, invite your mates around, and just have a proper laugh. Awesome stuff. Then we've got uh, Cage, which stars Lou Ferrigno and Reb Brown. 
Uh, you, you shouldn't laugh at this film because um, Lou Ferrigno and Red Brown, they're in Vietnam. Lou Ferrigno gets shot in the head but survives. And of course, he suffers from it mentally, so he becomes like a child. And he gets exploited by like gangster, like gangsters into cage fighting. So then Reb Brown has to save him. And there's some very sweet, tender moments between the two uh, throughout. Uh, yeah, it's... The more I think about this, is so politically incorrect, but um, it's such an awesome film. Great fight scenes as well. And I love how this is the special features according to the DVD. Full screen presentation. Audio English 2.0 Dolby Stereo. Scene selection. Interactive menus. Digitally mastered. Those aren't extras. That's just the film. But yeah, fantastic stuff. Then we've got some... Uh, I think Craig would be a fan of this one because it's an 80s screwball comedy. And this is Hard Bodies and Hard Bodies 2. Uh, yeah, TNA, youngsters want to have fun, want to get laid. Well, the first one actually follows uh, like a group of older men who uh, go to the beaches because uh, they want to get younger girls and they start to get to know some of them. Yeah, there's lots of you know, TNA in there. And it's, it's silly, but it's fun at the same time. Highly recommended. Quickly see what comments we have. Uh, just Craig giving me the horns. Uh, Craig seems to give me the horn quite a bit. But um, yeah, not going to show you. Well, I am. But I want to get a better version of The French Connection. This is just a budget DVD. That is a classic film. William Freakin is one of the most underappreciated directors of all time. But uh, yeah, French Connection 1 and 2. The second one, it's a good sequel. But the first one, just, oh, what a film. But I'm getting rid of that DVD. Then we've got Lars von Trier's Antichrist, which, um, yeah, we've got some questionable content in this one, including a fox that, I can't remember, what, what does the fox say? That, don't you fucking dare uh, answer that one. Uh, yeah, it's uh, very questionable, and there's uh, genital mutilation in there. By now. Uh, if you ever want a, a, next, a reason to cry when you watch a film, watch Grave of the Fireflies. This is a piece of animation that just shows people who say, oh, cartoons are for kids, that sort of thing. If you make them sit down and watch this, they will be in absolute tears. As I was when I watched this, because it's about... Uh, a young boy and his younger sister who, um, after being bombed by the Americans in Japan, they uh, basically, they're trying to survive. And his sister becomes ill, ultimately dies. Um, it's, it's bleak as hell. It's absolutely bleak as hell. And if you've got younger siblings, this is going to get you right in the feels. It's one that I want to watch again. But I'm really not in the mood to cry, so I won't be watching it again anytime soon. Then we've got Ken Russell's Tommy, which is, of course, adapted from The Who's album of the same name. Uh, yeah, this is a batshit insane film. I absolutely love it. It's so grand. It's so loud. It's so obnoxious. It's you know multicolored. It's just outrageous for outrageous sake. Fantastic film great soundtrack as well and the original album is fantastic by the who then we've got what a lot of people consider to be ken russell's greatest film and that's the devils starring oliver reed and um vanessa redgrave who plays this like sort of like crippled deformed nun shouldn't really do a gesture when you say crippled and deformed peter that's not very nice but um yeah this is uh, it is cut because I think it's at Warner Brothers. They have a full uncut print, but they never want people to see it. Aside from if you go to like a, a very limited screening of the film. Uh, but yeah, it's very blasphemous. There's uh, lots of sex in it. And it's, it's just a good, trashy, operatic time. If operatic is a proper word. 
Uh, then we've got The Living Dead at Manchester Morgue, uh, which is a zombie film uh, based in uh, England, merry old England. And there's actually scenes that were shot in Manchester. Uh, but I think it's mainly shot around the Peak District. But um, yeah, it's an Italian film, and the, the dubbing that they've got in this film is just fantastic. It's like, oh my god, there's a zombie, sort of thing. Um, aside from that, uh, a really good zombie film, uh, full of atmosphere, and it's a little bit different from what you would expect from a zombie film from the 70s, although it does deliver on the gore. Uh, so we might as well get these out of the way. Next up, we've got Christoph Kulowski's The Double Life of Veronique, about a woman who's going about her daily life, but then she uh, bumps into a doppelganger. So it's it's an interesting film. There's much more to it than that, but it's been about six years since I watched it. They've got another triple feature, and if you're a man and you like action films, you can act action films if you're a woman. But um, yeah, if you love that testosterone, pick up this collection uh the big racket the heroin busters and street law all directed by enzo g castellari i think um lee russell covered a couple of these films on um you must kill them on sight the podcast that he does um but yeah these are fantastic films and ones that you could just watch time and time again that's that's a night viewing sorted right there awesome stuff uh, then we've got another Lucio Fulci Jello. This is Don't Torture a Duckling, which again deals with uh, Catholicism and uh, the small-mindedness of religious people and like the, the social divide that was happening in Italy at the time. And uh, yeah, it's got one of the best finales to a film ever. I'm not going to tell you what it is. You can look it up for yourself, but it's just so obscene. It's beautiful. Uh, another one, we've got Sergio Martino's Torso, another Giallo film. Uh, great stuff again, um, although not one of my favourite films from the genre. Still damn good, and a great soundtrack. Then we've got Hitchhike, which again stars Franco Nero. And it's about a young couple who um, they are driving around and they're supposed to be driving around in America, but it's shot in Italy, and you would not think that it was like the Italian countryside that they were driving in. Uh, it's amazing how they managed to to pull that off. But uh, basically, David Hess, who is, of course, from Last House on the Left, and um, The House at the Edge of the Park, another classic, uh, he's just committed a bank robbery, and they pick him up as a hitchhiker. And then he just basically abducts them, and uh, the couple sort of turn on each other. It's, it's a lovely little triangle going on in this film. Fantastic stuff. Then we've got another piece of trash from the legendary Bruno Matai, Rats, Night of Terror. Post-apocalyptic uh, film. Rats are, you know, they, they contract diseases and carry diseases, and uh, when you're bitten, you become, you literally become a rat, uh, pretty much. Uh, yeah, just schlocky, trashy, full of action, so cheap, beautiful. Quickly check the comments once again. Uh, rings a bell. Uh, what film was that, Craig? I'll answer that when uh, I look at the comments again. Uh, then we've got classic Dawn of the Dead. Um, this isn't the best edition of the film. I do have a much better edition of the film, but... This was the first version of the film that I ever bought after watching like the last one hour on TV. And even though it was like the last hour of the film, I was just so blown away by it that I had to pick it up the next day. And I did. And uh, yeah, Dawn of the Dead, the full and cut version, the director's cut. George Romero, such a loss to cinema, even though for whatever reason, the studios just turned their back on him. Um, he could not get the backing for any projects, even though he probably single-handedly legitimized the zombie genre. And uh, yeah, this is one of my all-time favorite films that I can watch over and over and over again. We gave it a mention a little while ago, Last House on the Left. This is the free disc version, which has the... Uh, Going to Pieces, Rise and Fall of the Slasher Film Documentary. Again, very bleak film. Um, 
very controversial. And uh, yeah, I think it's a really good film. Of course, sort of like a a remake almost of um, The Virgin Springs, about two young girls who are going to a concert and uh, they get basically kidnapped and just put through the worst thing a young girl could be put through. And then eventually they're dead and uh, the convicts end up spending the night, you know, taking up uh, residence in the home of um, one of the girls and their parents work out what's gone on. Beautiful, beautiful, bloody and trashy, but also very straight faced and bleak at the same time. Even though there are some odd comedic elements with the police officers, with uh, what's his face from uh, Karate Kid, the uh, uh, like the 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 main tutor of the the bad characters. Uh, I've never really had a soft spot for Karate Kid. Uh, the, 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 the film with the arse on the front. Oh, I see. Um, probably it was on Channel Four absolutely ages ago, and I remember watching it and I was thinking, "This is awesome." And then it took me like six years, if not more, to actually work out the name of the film. And then, as soon as I worked it out, I found it on DVD for like four quid. I was like, "Happy days." So the last pile now, we've got another triple feature of uh, sort of thriller films from Italy. We've got The Fifth Chord, The Forbidden Ladies, or The Forbidden Photos of a Lady Above Suspicion. Try saying that after you had a few beers. And then The Pajama Girl Case, based on a true story. Again, good, solid Italian thrillers. Full of suspense and gore. Uh, then we've got another film by Ben Wheatley, and my favourite film that he's directed. One of my favourite films of all time, Kill List. Starts off as a sort of like buddy hitman film. Well, not really a buddy hitman film, but there are comedic elements in there. And then it just takes such a dark twist, but it never spells it out what's going on. So a lot of stuff is implied, so it leaves it up to the viewer to work out and uh, come to their own conclusions. But um, yeah, this is just a fantastic film. Awesome, awesome stuff. Then we've got another crime film uh, from uh, Romalo Guerrieri, and this is Young, Violent, Dangerous, about a group of middle-class kids who are just bored, and then they basically go on like a killing crime spree. And uh, Thomas Millian plays as one of the as the detective who's trying to sort it out. Uh, very politically and socially conscious cinema, but it doesn't get in the way of the action. Then we've got a Joe D'Amato classic, Emmanuel in America, starring Laura Gemser. Uh, highlights of this film, uh, you get to see a woman wank a horse, and uh, towards the end, there's a really nice sort of like faux snuff film aspect. Uh, but it's done so well. Uh, it's done better than most modern-day snuff-type films. Uh, but yeah, this is good, trashy, trashy, trashy fun. Highly, highly recommended. There we've got another Clash-related film. This is Rude Boy the Movie. Awesome stuff. Uh, includes some of the best uh, live performances from The Clash in their early days. Follows a young guy, Ray, who um, he, you know, he's, he's unemployed. He's unhappy with the way the country's being run, understandably, because Thatcher was an absolute cunt. Let's just uh, say that. And uh, yeah, he gets a job as a roadie for the Clash, gets to know the band, and it's just a it's just a cool story. And you get some really good uh, Clash footage in there. Uh, sticking with punk, we've got Punk Attitude, uh, a film by Don Letts. This is the quintessential punk documentary that you should check out. And uh, a bonus to the release that I got is you get a reproduction of two copies of the Sniffing Glue zine from the 70s. Um, yeah, we're not in... Uh, situations aren't too dissimilar. So where's this uh, youth uprising? Where's this music scene? But now instead we get fucking Antifa running around smashing up you know, local businesses. Um, yeah, we can't do you know, social injustice, right, can we, in the 21st century? Let's be honest. So if you've been interested by any of the Italian crime films that I've been showing, then you should definitely check out this documentary, which will 
talks about the Italian crime films. And uh, yeah, just essential for lovers of the genre or people who want to get into the genre itself. And Mike Malloy is doing a documentary now about uh, VHS. So that's going to be cool. <clears throat> Excuse me. That's going to be cool. Then we've got the uh, exploitate, like the exploitation film of all exploitation films, Thriller, a Cruel Picture, about uh, a girl who, when she's a child, she's um, sexual abuse seems to be a, a popular thing in these films. Uh, she gets like abused when she's a child by a stranger, and as a result of that, she becomes a mute. So fast forward, so she's in her teens, of course, portrayed by the absolutely gorgeous Christina Lindbergh, and uh, she's off to go see, like, a, I think it's a psychiatrist or a doctor to go into the city because she's a farm girl. She gets picked up by this, like, sly multimillionaire who, like, offers to give her a ride, takes her out for a meal, gets her drugged up, and then gets her addicted to heroin, so then she will become a prostitute for him. She basically like fights against it, tries to escape, and as a result, he cuts out her eye with a scalpel. And a lot of people have said that that scene, where you actually see the scalpel going into an eye, is actually from a real corpse. So I don't know how legitimate that is, but filmmakers in the 70s, I would not put it past them. So, yeah, she's, like, hooked on drugs. She's got to deal with these horrible people. She gets, you know, she's a prostitute now against her will. And uh, eventually she plucks up the courage to get revenge, and she gets revenge in the best possible way. Classic film. Then we've got uh, The Hunt, a.k.a. Yagton, by um, Thomas Vinterberg, starring Mads Mikkelsen. Oh, this is an uncomfortable film. This is an aggravating film. This is... Uh, I've never been so frustrated with a film for the right reasons, because it's done in such a a great way. So basically, Mads Mikkelsen stars as a, a, a preschool teacher sort of thing, and um, the daughter of one of his friends is a student there. And um, she basically lies and says that he showed her his penis because, you know, apparently kids do that. Um, don't, don't give kids too much credit. A lot of them are so fucking aware of what they are doing. They know a lie is a lie. So don't say, oh, but she's just a child. No, she's a little devious bitch. Let's leave it at that. And uh, basically, they live in a small hunting town. And the word comes out, he loses his job. And basically, it, it just goes to show you how one lie can snowball and snowball and snowball. And uh, yeah, there's some absolutely harrowing and heartbreaking things that happen in this film. Um, if you are emotionally unstable, do not watch that film. Seriously. It it's one of the rare times where I've had to pause to regain my composure because I was so frustrated with what was happening in the film. But um, yeah, it, it is it is a great film. So no new comments yet. And I thank Craig for keeping me company. Next up, we've got my favourite crime film by Umberto Lenzi, and this is Die Gewalt bin ich or Il Cinico L'Infama Il Violento. The English title is The Cynic, The Rat, The Fist, starring Maurizio Merli with the best moustache ever, uh, Thomas Millian and John Saxon. It's just the best Italian crime film of all time, and you should go see it. We've got a classic British film directed by Gary Oldham, who should die... Or, is it Oldman or Oldham? I sometimes get that. Yeah, Oldman. The only film that he's directed, and I don't know why he hasn't directed more, because this is a masterpiece starring uh, Ray Winston. And uh, yeah, it's, it's again, it's just so real. It's so raw. It's about middle class families. It deals with drug abuse. It deals with abuse of partners. And it's a powerful, powerful film. And uh, yeah, one of the greatest British films of all time, in my opinion. And my opinion means something, of course. So never forget that. 
Oh, that pale eye is gorgeous. Then we've got uh, the German release of The Lady in White. Uh, this film holds a special place in my heart because uh, my mum watched this with me when I was a kid. We rented it on VHS. And uh, it's basically about a young boy who, at Halloween, he gets locked in his school. Is it Halloween, or do they just dress up? And uh, while he's in there, because he has to spend the night there, he sees the uh, the ghost of a girl, and it replays the moment of the girl being killed, but you don't see the person who kills him uh, kills her. And, uh, yeah, it's, it's a ghost story, and uh, it's got some really you know, hard-to-watch moments in it, surprisingly, but it's it's weirdly child-friendly at the same time. It's creepy, full of heart, though, and, um, yeah, it's an, an awesome film, especially when it comes to Halloween. And speaking of perfect Halloween films, we've got The Willies, which is a, an anthology film. Uh, different stories. Again, it's got, like, sort of adult themes, but it is child-friendly at the same time. So, you know, I know I'm doing this Halloween. Lady in White and uh, The Willies. Fantastic films. Going back to the porn now, we've got Water Power, starring Jamie Gillis, directed by Sean Costello. This is uh, another bootleg that I was I was actually given this one. And uh, I won't tell you what happens in the film. I will just give you the alternate titles for this film. Water Power, a.k.a. Enema Bandit a.k.a. The Enema Killer. You want to Google that now, don't you? You want to Google water power. Uh, going to a more legitimate uh, piece of porn. Basically, the way I see this, it's like the porn version of Taxi Driver. And it involves enemas. So uh, that, that's, that's all you need to know. Seriously, watch the film. Uh, then we're going back to Henry Paris or Radley Metzger, and this is Maraschino Cherry, uh, about a woman who owns um, like a, a magazine, I think, and uh, there's lots of sex in it. Can't remember too much about the story. I need to have a Henry Paris marathon. Uh, going back to the Jellos, we've got Dario Argento's Deep Red, or Profondo Rosso. Uh, this is probably the Jello that a lot of people would say they enjoy the most from Dario Argento. Classic, and Fucking awesome score from Goblin. Uh, then we've got another piece for Tarn Cinema. I've got Rico the Mean Machine, starring Chris Mitchum and Barbara Boucher. Um, there are two moments in this film that make me want to cross my legs. Uh, the first one involves a nice strip tease with Barbara Boucher on the boot of a car. And the second one involves a castration. Need I say any more? Uh, here's the other version of Sallow that I have, which is from the Criterion. It's this beautiful uh, release. Comes in this absolutely gorgeous artwork. Look at that booklet. It, like, full of essays about the film. Um, yeah, just beautifully presented. Comes on two discs. One of my favourite DVD editions that I own. And the film, as I said, is just an absolute masterpiece. And highly recommended for anyone who has a strong stomach. Uh, another Italian crime film. We've got Mad Dog Killer, a.k.a. The Beast of a Gun, uh, starring Helmut Berger. Uh, again, another one of those films that I've only watched halfway through, so I can't really comment on it too much. But it is a little bit um, masochistic and um, male chauvinous in places. Then we've got La Sette Madonna. Uh, I think... One of the alternate thoughts is Last House on the Beach, so sort of playing with that Last House on the Left sort of thing. Um, basically, it's about a group of girls who I think are like training to be uh, nuns, and uh, basically a group of criminals, all men of course, uh, take hot, um, refuge in the the place where they're staying. And they have a little bit of fun at the uh, girls' expense. So, uh, yeah. Fantastic score, though. Best film of all time. Don't need to say any more. Go watch it. Some more Italian crime. Uh, a few more pieces of Italian crime. We've got Mario Adorf in uh, What Have They Done to Your Daughters? 
which, uh, as you can tell, is about young girls who are getting picked off one by one. Then we've got the Convoy Busters. Can't remember too much about this one, but again, it's got Mr. Mustache himself. Um, his name's escaped me, and he's one of Maurizio Merli. Then we've got the Violent Professionals from Sergio Martino. Another great piece of Italian crime. There we've got Christoph Kilowski's The Three Colors trilogy. All fantastic films. Um, think dealing with like the French Renaissance, but of course set in different, set in more modern times, of course, but using those sort of themes. I don't know, it's a bit too academic for me in that regard, but the films are really good. Pieces of uh, drama. Highly, highly recommended. Quickly check the comments. Uh, da, 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 da. Ah, I see Paul has entered the fray, which is always good. And I'm sure he will agree with me on a lot of these sort of like trashier films. So, da, 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 da. no problem, brother, from Craig. Paul, exclamation mark, that's what they call me. Deep Red is great. Tenebrae is the best. I do enjoy Tenebrae. I need to pick that up on DVD. Yeah. Uh, he also goes on to say Salo is or Solo is fun or Salo. Then Craig writes Paul. Paul writes Craig. Uh, Craig was saying he Paul has a strong stomach. Uh, Paul agrees. A few people's raw meat. Mm. Raw meat porn. Yeah, I'm sure Paul's got some raw meat porn on his hard drive. But hello, Paul. Uh, next up, we've got another Maurizio Miley film and another bootleg, and this is uh, Seagulls Fly Low. Yeah, they, they picked short straws. Uh, they were clutching their straws, I should say, when they were trying to name that film. Uh, but again, another crime film. Can't remember too much about it because it's been such a long time since I've watched it. There we go again. Maurizio Merli, Fear in the City, playing as another detective uh, while things are happening in the city. Uh, this also stars James Mason. It's amazing sort of the, the Hollywood stars you would find in these somewhat low-budget Italian films. Uh, then we've got the Carter Stevens Teenage Twins collection, uh, which includes Teenage Twins, Punk Rock and Roller Babies. Yeah, Carl Stevens, one of my favourite classic porn directors. Uh, Teenage Twins follows Teenage Twins, uh, which turns into a sort of like Evil Dead, Evil Dead cult sort of film. Uh, punk Rock is about Private Detective, played by one of my favourite porn stars. Um, not Dennis, but Dennis Parker was his um, disco name. Oh my God, I've forgotten what his name is. How can they say that? That's because he's one of my favourite actors ever. Uh, da, 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 da. Oh, shit, I can't remember his name. Da, 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 da. I need to find out his name, because that's going to bug the shit out of me. Wade Nichols, there we go. Dennis Parker, a.k.a. Wade Nichols, plays as a private detective after he's saved a young girl. She gets abducted again, and... Uh, it seems that there's white slavery going on uh, under the guise of punk rock. So you, you get some punk rock music in there, um, get some good old-fashioned porn, and they use Alan Chew's soundtrack from The Hanged Man, which was a British uh, crime short series in the 70s, and they use it really, really well. So back on the Italian crime then, a bit more Umberto Lenzi action with Gang War in Milan. Don't think I need to explain that one. But it's damn good. Uh, then we've got The Future is Unwritten, Joe Strummer, which was the documentary by Julian Temple. Fantastic documentary. Whether you're a fan of The Clash, Joe Strummer or not, highly, highly recommended. Uh, then we've got More Italian Crime with Thomas Millian, directed by Stelvio Massi. And we have Squadra, Squadra Volanta, um can't remember what the english name for that is but um yeah sort of in second running for best uh mustache in an italian film 
Can't remember too much about that one. I've watched so many Italian crime films that it's hard to remember. Uh, then we've got The Essential Clash, the DVD version, which includes music videos for all of the singles, as well as some live videos, and then like promo footage and the short film that they made, Hell W10, which is awesome, using outtakes from the... Um, uh, that would appear on the, uh, what's the bootleg called? Uh, Rap Patrol from Fort Bragg, I think it is. Which, of course, was um, Combat Rock. Then we've got Takeshi, T Takeshi Katano in Violent Cop. Nice piece of Asian crime as well. Asian crime from the 90s. Whoa. How awesome are those films? And, I mean, come on. Takeshi Kitano is just a legend in his own right. Uh, da, 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 da. Thanks, Dick. That'll be in my head all day from Paul. Well, you just need to look at your internet history and you'll be okay. Uh, then we're going uh, classic Italian cinema with Federico Fellini's La Dolce Vita. Still not watched this one, so cannot comment on it. Got some nice uh, hammer goodness, or is this amicus? I can't remember if this was hammer or amicus. I think it was hammer. Got twins of evil. Lovely, busty twin vampires. Whoa. Just just the, the sisters alone in this film is worthy of you watching it. Plus it's got Peter Cushing, so, you know. Then we've got a couple more Radley Metzger, Henry Paris films. We've got Naked Came the Stranger. Uh, da, 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 da. Trying to see what this... Basically about a radio... The sexual exploits of a radio host as she sets up to even the score with her philandering husband. So, uh, yeah, classy porn there. Then we've got Barbara Broadcast. Uh, in an elegant restaurant where gourmet food and gourmet sex are both on the menu, former high-class prostitute and acclaimed author Barbara Broadcast, played by the stunning Annette Haven, who is indeed stunning, transforms lunch with journalist C.J. Lang, who is included on the artwork, into an afternoon of sexual excess. Barbara seduces her way through a corporate office in a busy Manhattan nightclub, while Lang ventures into the kitchen for smouldering and canter with Wade Nichols. That may just be the greatest sex scene ever filmed. Climaxing with the return of Misty Beethoven, Constance Money and her tormentor, Jamie Gillis. Bon appétit. Yeah. It's, it's intellectual porn. If you want to see it like that. Uh, speaking of intellectual porn, we've got Caligula. Oh yes. What a piece of smut that is with Andy, Andy McDowell, Malcolm McDowell and Helen, Helen Mirren, Peter O'Toole, all of these fantastic actors. And then you've got, you know, Bob Guccione, who basically wanted to turn this into you know, a massive porno film. So it's like one of the most expensive disasters in cinematic history. And I'm more thank I'm so thankful for it. Plus, you will never see butter the same way again after this one awesome awesome film and this is like a a four three disc set that i picked up because one disc isn't enough uh quickly see your comments nope so you can go uh then we've got punk rock and pleasure palace these are the r-rated versions where it's not just the same film uh, but with the pawn taken out of it. They replace the pawn with a bit more of a richer story and more punk performances. So if you're into punk music, um, I think this is essentially the first time uh, footage from the likes of Maxis, Kansas City in New York was ever put into film. So it's very historically significant. But both the X-rated and the R-rated version of the film are just fantastic. Then we've got the second box set from uh, Fernando de Leo, and this includes Naked Violence, Shoot First, Die Later, and then The Kidnap Syndicate. All phenomenal films, although Naked Violence is a little bit more of a 
police procedural sort of film about a, a school teacher who gets raped by a classmate, uh, class members. They are just kids after all. Uh, then we've got another Umberto Lenzi crime film, and this is um, Almost Human, starring the legend that is Henry Silva and uh, the late Thomas Millian. Uh, yeah, this is quite bleak and quite gruesome for a crime film, but I love it for it. Fantastic stuff again from Umberto Lenzi. And it's got another phenomenal soundtrack from Ennio Morricone. Coming to the last few releases, next up we've got the films of Michael Haneke. This includes The Seventh Continent, Benny's Video, 71 Fragments of a Chronology of Chance, The Castle, Funny Games, Code Unknown, The Piano Teacher, which is my favourite film of his, Time of the Wolf, Hidden, and The White Ribbon. So, um, yeah, I've got a hell of a lot of time for Michael Haneke. And every film that I've seen by him has at least been uh, captivating. Then we've got one for Paul here, and we've got Dawn of the Dead. My favourite, it is my favourite zombie film. As much as I love the trashiness of Hell of the Living Dead from Bruno Mattai, it will never hold a candle to this. And this is the awesome box set. Uh, I think it's called The Ultimate Box Set, even though there are better box sets about now. But you do get four discs. I'm sure people have seen this before. And you get like a comic book as well as, you know, writings on the film. But you get the US theatrical cut, the extended version, the European version, and a disc full of documentaries. But just look at that artwork for this. This has been on my like this had been on my like wish list for such a long time. And then I think I saw someone on a Facebook group a couple of years ago selling it for like ten quid. And I'm like, I'm fucking buying that because Dawn of the Dead, it's my favourite of that first trilogy of films. It's my favourite George Romero film, and it's my favourite zombie film, and I've got a lot of history with the film as well. So um it's just a shame I'll not be able to get this signed by George himself because that would have just made this so much better. And in fact, I might watch Dawn of the Dead tonight after we've had our chat because it's just a classic. It's an absolute classic. And uh, Paul being in PA, you know, I'm, yeah, I'm sure you've been to uh, locations for this one. But um, yeah, phenomenal, phenomenal film. Doesn't matter which version of Dawn of the Dead you pick up, just pick up Dawn of the Dead. And then the last collection that we have is the Rhine Averna Fassbinder collection. This is from 69 to 1972. And the films on this are Love is Cold and Death, Katzelmacher, Gods of the Plague, The American Soldier, The Nicholas Hausen Journey, Rio das Mortas. Beware of the Holy Whore, The Merchant of Four Seasons, and The Bitter Tears of Petra von Kant. And uh, I've got to say, I think I've only seen two of these films because I've not really invested too much time to get through the box set. Even though I know uh, Fassbinder is a very highly respected director. And uh, he did love his beer, especially like place like the Oktoberfest. So um, got to appreciate him for that. So, yeah, it's not the most extensive DVD collection, and people say, well, if you like that film, why don't you own this? Um, I've sold so many DVDs over the past few years. Um, if I'd have kept them all, I would have had a really good collection. But as you saw, it is mainly Italian films, because that's what I want to focus on. Not too many new films, because you can just pirate them, or they'll appear on Sky at some point. But, um, yeah, if any of these films you want to know more about uh chances are i might have reviewed them on my film review channel so i'll put that link down below i won't bombard the description box with reviews of each film that i've reviewed uh that have been shown because who wants to to do that really uh but yeah go check out the film review channel mondo squalido and uh yeah any thoughts opinions on any of the films uh would be very well received and i'd really appreciate that 
And I'd like to thank, of course, uh, both Paul and Craig for keeping me company while I do this. And hopefully I'll speak to you both uh, later on tonight when Harry does his hangout. And I'll quickly read the comments. So, had to get a coffee, kids at play, dawn of the dead, exclamation mark times 1000 from Paul. I have it, I agree, indeed I have. So, uh, yeah, whatever I said about dawn of the dead, I was correct. So, um, yeah, it was something a little bit different. Um, I probably should have done this on my film review channel. I could have used uh, my... Uh, what what's that now the the live stream where you can actually make money from it because i'm eligible to do that on my other channel but i thought nah i thought i'd talk about it on the beer review channel because i'm a little bit bored while i'm sorting stuff out and uh yeah so thank you all for watching if you want to hear more film related content on this channel let me know maybe i could do the odd video every now and then but like i said at the start of this i am trying to think of ways to bring the two channels that I have together. And uh, if anybody's interested, I could do a CD collection video, maybe in a couple of weeks. Or maybe I'll uh, spur you all the, uh, the trauma of having to sit through that. So uh, yeah, thank you all for watching this. Thanks again to Craig and Paul and to anybody else who has been watching this as it's been live. And any comments that you have or questions, feel free to let me know. So, um, yeah, got to finish from beer, and I'm going to start sorting more DVDs out. Happy days. All right, see you guys later, and uh, have a good one.